Recording live from my apartment in Los Angeles, California, I'm your man Nathaniel, and this is the Weekly Watch List. Welcome back to the Weekly Watch List, where we count down what to stream right now on Amazon Prime Video. Now I just want to start this episode off by saying thank you for all the amazing support you guys showed for episode one. But unfortunately, Amazon's recommendation algorithm is getting stronger and more sophisticated each and every day. Once it's turned on, it can't be shut off. So in order for me to keep this job, please, I'm begging you guys, go ahead and comment, we stand a human king, Nathaniel. Now this week, we're streaming vampire content. Vampires are the true undead IP, with the first vampire movie Nosferatu coming out all the way back in 1922. Vampires have come a long way, but check it out for yourself with the best vampire content streaming right now on Amazon Prime Video. First on our list is the sparkly white elephant in the room. It's all five movies of Stephanie Meyer's Twilight Quadrilogy. That's right, I'm talking Twilight, New Moon, Eclipse, Breaking Dawn Part 1, Breaking Dawn Part 2, Waning Gibbous. What? Oh, those aren't. If you don't know by now, Twilight follows Kristen Stewart as Bella Swan, a newly arrived transplant in Forks, Washington, where she meets Edward Cullen, played by Robert Pattinson, the dreamy vampire boy at her high school. But apparently nobody here is good enough for him. <laughs> like I care, you know? <laughs> so, yeah. Seriously, like, don't waste your time. <laughs> I wasn't planning on it. As the two fall in love, Bella finds herself drawn deeper and deeper into Edward's sexy, dangerous vampire world. You brought a snack. A human? The girl is with us. I think it best if you leave. Also, we have Taylor Lautner as Edward's romantic rival slash hot werewolf boy from another school, Jacob. Sam's trying to help me. Don't blame him. But if you want somebody to blame, how about those filthy bloodsuckers you love? The Collins. And Anna Kendrick as Bella's fake friend, Jessica. Hey, you're from Arizona, right? Yeah. Aren't people from Arizona supposed to be, like, really tan? Now that we're past peak Twilight as a thing, I think the movies are definitely worth revisiting. I mean, vampire baseball? Where do I sign up? But if I had to bring up one detail that really took me out of the movie, everyone's way too ripped. These guys are like a thousand years old and they never skipped a leg day? I think I speak for everyone when I say it's time for Hollywood to give us the representation we deserve. Dumpy dad bod vampires. Coming in at number two, we have Neil Jordan's adaptation of Anne Rice's novel, the 1994 gothic horror movie, Interview with the Vampire, available to rent or buy on Prime Video. The film follows Brad Pitt as Louis, a vampire from 18th century New Orleans, giving a wide-ranging interview about his life story to journalist Christian Slater. So, what do you do? I'm a vampire. Louis describes his transformation at the hands of vampire Tom Cruise. You'll get used to killing. Just forget about that mortal coil turning 10-year-old Kirsten Dunst into a vampire for company. That's enough, Shelly. You must stop before the heart stops. I want some more. Oh, I know. Meeting vampire Antonio Banderas. And they had forgotten the first lesson, that we must be powerful, beautiful, and without regret. And other experiences that have made Louis a hot, immortal sad boy. I thought of all the things I'd done. Couldn't undo. And I longed for one second to peace. So sad, but so hot. The film features great performances from Kirsten Dunst as a creepy, decades old vampire trapped in the unaging body of a 10 year old girl. Which one of you made me the way I am? What you are? A vampire gone insane that pollutes its own bed. And Tom Cruise as the world's fanciest vampire, Lestat giving a really solid, unhinged 90s cruise performance. It's your coffin, my love. Enjoy it. Most of us never get to know what it feels like. Why do you do this? I like to do it. I enjoy it. Take your rest seats, taste pure things. Kill them swiftly if you will, but do it. For do not doubt, you are a killer, Louis. Also, can we talk about how expensive movies used to be? I mean, look at all the stuff they built for old New Orleans. Just the cravat budget alone must have been staggering. 
If Interview with the Vampire was being adapted now, it would cost nothing, and it would be called Podcast with the Vampire. Do you still want death? Or have you tasted it enough? Damn, 90s Tom Cruise taking a big old bite out of 90s Brad Pitt? Yes, please. I think Brad Pitt actually starts to enjoy it like halfway through, before he gets blue necked. BRB, gonna go bang out some vampire Tom Cruise ex Brad Pitt AU fanfic. Come begin at number three, check out the action packed Vampires vs. Werewolf series, Underworld. Underworld stars Kate Beckinsale as Celine, a vampire death dealer in the middle of a secret centuries-long war between vampires and werewolves, which this movie calls Lycans. When Celine begins to fall in love with a human that's been bitten, Scott Speedman, she decides to go against her plan to protect him from both the vampires and werewolves. and uncover the truth behind the ancient vampire-werewolf conflict. There are times as a filmmaker when you have a vision that's so clear that it's 100% transmitted to the audience. Watching this movie, I could tell that the vision was clearly the Matrix, plus vampires. Are these the slowest werewolves ever? They didn't even make it to the end of the hallway. She should have just taken the elevator with that guy if I'm being honest. Coming in at number four, we have the show that launched a thousand CW series. I'm talking about Buffy the freaking Vampire Slayer. Buffy the Vampire Slayer stars Sarah Michelle Gellar as Buffy Summers, a 90s high school girl just trying to fit in. Buffy, maintaining a normal social life as a slayer is it, it, problematic at best. This is the 90s, the 1990s in point of fact, and I can do both. Except she's also this generation's chosen slayer, which means she basically has superpowers and has to cut class to fight the vampires, demons, and other forces of darkness that threaten humanity. The show has a really great ensemble cast, including high school classmates Willow and Xander, bad vampires turned good guys Angel and Spike, and Buffy's watcher Giles, a British guy that poses as the school librarian and tells Buffy and her friends what to do. The monsters are used more as metaphors for universal teen problems like parental pressure, dating, living up to others' expectations, except in this world, the teens can punch their problems in the face. Take that, Bacne! Take that, Mile Run! But in all seriousness, this show is basically the Sopranos of high school vampire shows. I strongly recommend it to everybody. You're dead. I may be dead, but I'm still pretty. Which is more than I can say for you. You were destined to die. It was written. What can I say? I've flunked the written. <laughs> Hell is on earth? You're that amped about hell? Go there. 
I may be dead, but I'm still pretty, which is more than I can say for you. The meanness of a teen girl is actually the most powerful weapon in the universe. Now astute viewers might notice this quick insert shot. In the world of screenwriting, this is known as Chekhov's conveniently placed pointy wood thing. The idea that a conveniently placed pointy wooden thing in the first act will have a vampire inevitably fall to his death on it by the third act. Coming in at number 5 is Tom Holland's 1985 film, Fright Night. A horror comedy that begs the question, were boomers the real vampires all along? Fright Night follows teenage horror lover Charlie Brewster, who becomes convinced that his next door neighbor Jerry is a vampire, mostly because Jerry keeps doing sketchy stuff right in front of his wide open windows. When Charlie confronts Jerry about being a vampire, Jerry threatens to seduce Charlie's girlfriend and his mom. Afraid I'd never come over without being invited first. <laughs> <laughs> of course, uh, now that I've been made welcome, I'll probably drop by quite a bit. In fact, anytime I feel like it. Brutal. Charlie has no choice but to hire TV horror presenter slash vampire expert Peter Vincent. But Mr. Vincent, you have to believe me. I'm telling the truth. Come on, you just said you believe in vampires. I lied. And the two set off to try and kill the vampire before he transforms everyone Charlie knows into a monster. This movie uses vampires as a metaphor for male anxiety over sexual inadequacy, which is obviously something that I could never relate to and have never heard of. I really love how cartoonishly violent it is. The special effects are all 80s gross out practical stuff, and they actually use some effects from Ghostbusters that were deemed too gruesome for that movie. And there you have it guys, five of the best vampire movies to stream right now on Amazon Prime Video. Keep it spooky, and let me know what you want to see next in the comments. Or, tell me how much of an idiot I am for leaving out your favorite vampire movie. I can take it. Until next time, don't blink, always be streaming.